Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. I wanted to welcome you all to the webinar this evening. I am your host, your moderator, Dr. Lauren Levine. Uh, as always, we've got a great turnout uh, for these webinars. We had uh, just a little under 800 people registered. Uh, as I've been doing for the last couple of years, I always start by saying I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. Looks like we're definitely on the the, you know, hopefully on the, the outs with uh, all that we've gone through the last couple of years. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Uh, of course, I commend you for being here this evening, continuing your dental education, uh, even with all the, the ups and downs that practices have experienced over the last few years. Uh, the, the need for education doesn't end, and of course, you all know that because you're here this evening. As usual, I'm only going to speak for about a minute or two. I want to make sure that Dr. Nazarian can speak for as long as he needs. Anytime we do these webinars, when I look through the list, uh, typically we only have about 10% of the people that are new. So for the other 90%, you can maybe tune me out for a minute or so. Uh, if you are new and have never taken a webinar before, the way it works is that you have a control panel on your screen. You type in your questions as you think about them. We don't typically get to the questions until the end of the webinar. Our speaker will usually go for 45 to 55 minutes, give or, give or take. Um, our sponsor is going to come on for a few minutes afterwards and, and mention uh, you know, some special deals that they've got going on, and then we open it up to the Q&A. I try to get to all the questions that we have. I never know. You know. Some days we have three questions. Sometimes we have 103 questions. So I, I, don't, I can't predict how many we're going to get to. I will do my best to get to as many as we possibly can. Uh, if for some reason we don't get to your specific question, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, I'll do my best to get to as many as I said. In the next few days, look for a couple of things. This webinar, as with all the webinars that I do, is being recorded. So uh, don't worry if you don't, can't make it to the end. Uh, a link to the recording will be sent out. That usually goes out within a couple of days or so. During the webinar, uh, Dr. Nazarian is going to be demonstrating a few products and, and systems that he uses, which are exclusive to Golden Dent. Uh, as always, I thank Golden Dent for their ongoing sponsorship of these webinars. There's no way I could do it with, without their help. They're the ones that bring in the speaker. They're the ones that uh, handle all the, the follow-up afterwards. They are also the ones that handle the CE. And I get this question. I usually get a multiple emails after the webinar, so I'm going to try to mentioned at least two or three times uh, during the webinar. If you are on the webinar and you stay on the webinar, you will be sent a CE form. That usually goes out in about a week or so, maybe a couple of weeks. Um, they have to go through the list. They have to make sure that you are on for the bulk of the webinar, but they don't obviously send out CE if you logged on for six minutes and, and then logged out. So it can take a little bit of while. So, you know, so please be patient, but it, it will go out. There's nothing you need to do. There's no quiz or registration or test or anything like that. You know, log out, you're done, and just check your inbox. If you haven't, don't have it within a couple of weeks, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll forward it along to them to, just to make sure. Sometimes it ends up in, in junk or, or spam filters, so you know, keep an eye on that. So with that out of the way, I wanted to welcome back Dr. Aaron Azarian. Uh, he's uh, lectured a number of times with us in the past. He has a private practice in Troy, Michigan with an emphasis on comprehensive and restorative care. He's a diplomat of the International Congress of Oral Implantologists, which is ICOI. Uh, if you read any of the taste journals, then you know who he is because they've been published in, in many popular dental, public, dental publications. He's consistently listed as a top dental educator. He's in, conducted many lectures and hands-on workshops on aesthetic materials, dental implants, extractions, grafting, and endo uh, throughout the U.S. and uh, really throughout the world. He's the lead faculty for Amplified Dental Training, which teaches atraumatic extractions, grafting, immediate dentures, which we'll, we'll be talking a lot of this stuff this evening, dental implant, implants, and endodontics. So, so Eric, we're thrilled to have you back and looking forward to a nice presentation. Great. Thank you, Dr. Levine, and welcome, everyone. This evening, our webinar will be talking about same-day teeth, uh, immediate implants, whether it's single or full arch, we'll be focusing our emphasis on full arch, but I definitely want to start by going into what our society today is wanting from us. So today's society demands a specific type of dental implant, whether it's a single tooth or full arch restoration, a dental implant that achieves good primary stability, has a slightly tapered design, 
has aggressive threads in its pattern so it can immediately fixate, has an internal connection that is stable, doesn't require multiple steps to place, can be immediately provisionalized if necessary, can be used in any type of bone. In other words, we don't need a specific type of implant for soft bone and another type of implant for hard bone. Uh, we want an implant that can be used in all types of bones and all types of conditions. And one that obviously has multiple restorative options, whether you're doing cement retained or screw retained. And obviously, we want an implant in today's society that is cost effective for the dentist, because we know if it's cost effective for the dentist, then we can offer it to all our patients because it makes it much more affordable. So the add-in implant is the one we'll be focusing on this evening, whether it's the Turig S or OS. Some of the advantages of this implant system is the fact that it does have a double lead thread. It's got high primary stability, even in type four type bone. It has a bone condensing property and self-drilling and self-cutting ability. We can actually redirect it uh, in um, the direction that we need to for optimal placement, especially when we're doing immediate placement uh, at the time of extractions. It has a built-in platform switching capability. Um, most importantly, we have an immediate function capability so that um, I'll show you in some of the examples this evening, whether it's a central tooth or a full arch, we can use these implants. And most importantly, whether it's a 3.5 diameter all the way to a six millimeter diameter, we have one restorative prosthetic platform for easy restoration. Here's a great example of a patient who presented to my practice. She had quite a bit of uh, crown and veneer work on her anterior teeth and had a pretty deep bite. She had a vertical fracture in tooth number seven, the lateral that we see in this radiograph. And so on the same day of extraction, we cleaned the socket out thoroughly and we were able to place a 3.75 by 16 millimeter implant um, in the area and immediately temporize it. So this is some of the beauty of this type of implant. We also look at full arch restorations and this patient presented for full arch guided uh, implant reconstruction. And in the same day, we were actually able to extract all the teeth, level the bone, use our surgical guides um, that were based off the CBCT and place provisionals. Now this is obviously the provisional after about two weeks of healing, but one can see that we were actually able to restore this patient to proper form, function, and aesthetics because of the implant system that we used. If we look at this case where we went, uh, where the pictures indicate the very beginning, uh, pre-op photos, and then the post-op where it's the definitive restoration, which is a titanium bar with zirconia um, coated over that, we can see on the radiograph that we indeed use the add-in Turig implants to restore this patient to uh, proper form and function. So let's take a look at a few examples. First, I'm gonna start with some easy cases and then we'll move our way up to a fully guided um, reconstruction case. So this patient presented to my practice these teeth were somewhat mobile. You can see some of the interproximal decay uh, right at the cervical areas uh, of these teeth. Upon radiographic examination, we can clearly identify that these teeth, in fact, do need to be extracted. So we let our patient know, look, a million dollars is not gonna save these teeth. These teeth need to be extracted. Um, and so we have a variety of different options that we can offer you. In this uh, patient's particular case, he chose to go with option three in the lower left-hand corner, which is using traditional implants with uh, zest locator abutments to provide an overdenture attachment system. We review the different types of bone, and we know in the lower anterior portion of the mandible, we have type one type bone. So we know that we can immediately load this, number one, um, with the locators, even with a removable device. Now we would never attempt to do this in the maxillary arch 
where we have more D3 or D4 type of bone, um, we could do it with fixed, but obviously we can't do it with um, overdenture uh, just because you, the, as the patient snaps it on and off, if the bone is soft, then we're gonna find that that could loosen any implant system. So we have a few models and we uh, illustrate to the patient what an overdenture looks like so they can understand. Our goal is to ideally place these um, for the most part in the canine to premolar region uh, in the lower arch. So we anesthetize our patient and utilizing the physics forceps from golden dent, we go ahead and atraumatically extract the teeth. Upon examination, we can clearly identify the amount of decay uh, at the gum line and actually below the gum line. So we know these teeth definitely needed to be removed. Once the teeth are extracted, we'll curette the sockets out completely and then reflect the flap. Here we're using another instrument from Golden Dent called the reflector. This is an instrument I helped create for Golden Dent. And it literally is the beaver tail portion of a molt with an elevator handle. This way the dental provider can use quite a bit of pressure and twisting motion to reflect uh, a full uh, arch. Um, so it makes it much more effective and efficient. Here we have some osseous cleaning and shaping burrs. If you look on the left-hand side of the screen, the diamond impregnated um, latch burrs are used to go inside the socket to remove any granulation tissue. Then the middle burr is used to do any sectioning. Then we have a small diamond burr that can go into your high speed to remove or contour any little areas of bone. Obviously, we're going to use the more aggressive shaped pear shaped burr and a surgical handpiece to com completely level the ridge. And so here we can see where we've used that burr in the kit to completely level this area. Again, we don't have to deglove the whole mandible, we're just degloving the portion where the teeth were at because the posterior regions were already flat. And our goal is to only place two implants. Notice using PTFE sutures, um, also available through Golden Dent, we um, were able to tie the lingual tissues so that when we utilize the bone shaping burr, we can level it without any trauma to the soft tissue. Here we can see the surgical kit for the Adin Turig implants. Um, you can see their step drills. And so since this was a free handed case, we utilize this kit. Everything is included. So we use the pilot drill to um, create some parallelism and create the pilot holes for the paralleling pins. Once we confirm that the position was ideal, then we progressively follow with the next step drills until we can place the implants. Now, since this bone in the anterior region is either D1 or D2, we are not going to under drill the osteotomy because these implants are aggressively threaded and so they would lock up. Um, so our goal is to go to full length with the appropriate drill sizes and not under drill. Um, so here you can see we utilize the 3.75 by 13 millimeter in length Turig S implants. And so here's a close up of the implant. And the beauty is this implant comes in a variety of different widths from 3.5 to 3.75, to 4.2, to five and six millimeters in diameter. The lengths come from 6.25 all the way to 18 millimeters uh, length in whether it's the S or the OS Turig implants. And we'll talk about that a little later. So here you can see that we've placed the implants in the appropriate positions. We go ahead and get a baseline reading with our penguin. This is also an instrument available from Golden Dent. It uses resonance frequency analysis to measure um, the stability of the implant. So obviously at the beginning, when we're just getting a start reading, it's not depicting osseointegration, but it's actually doing bone souting 
to make sure that this implant is stable. So it's using a frequency of different vibrations um, picked up by the instrument um, and translated into an implant stability quotient. Since we got a high ISQ, instead of putting um, healing caps and bearing it and soft relying the lower denture, we went ahead and placed the locators because knowing that we're using the Adden Turig implants that have great immediate fixation and stability, we can um, load these and allow osseo integration to take place without fear of micro movement. We're also going to add um, areas that are deficient or also around the neck of the implants where you saw um, or in the uh, sockets, some bone grafting material or DBM putty. And so here you can see the threads are all covered with bone and any extra areas uh, where there were sockets, we're going to go ahead and fill up to the ridge. Since we're able to get primary closure, we're not using a membrane. We don't have to worry about the bone coming out of the area. So we're using chromic gut sutures in a continuous pattern um, so that when we do the pickup, we don't have to worry about acrylic getting into the uh, sockets or suture line. Another insurance to help prevent that is to cut a piece of rubber dam and trim that accordingly so that when you do do the pickup, you don't have to worry about hard acrylic getting into the uh, sutures. And then when you pull the denture off, it's gonna pull the stitches out. So this is another great technique I like to utilize. Here we used Repace 2 Fast from Tokiyama, where it's a powder and liquid. We mix that to a certain consistency, place it into a monojet syringe, and then dispense that into the areas that we've relieved in the denture and we pick up the housings. Here we can see the excess hard acrylic that we will later trim in the laboratory. And since we feel confident of these implants, we're actually gonna be placing um, the retention, the blue retention plugs into the locators. Um, these are 1.5 pounds of retention each. So we'll get three pounds of retention to um, to able to remove this overdenture. And so this is what it looks like here. We're obviously not gonna go to a three pound or a five pound um, while these have just been immediately placed. We can later move on to the higher strengths once these implants actually go through osseo integration. So it's important to remember at the beginning, we're just relying on the thread pattern, the taper and the design of the implant to get mechanical retention and fixation or stabilization. Once four months passes, then we see the results of osseo integration. The beauty of this system is because of the variety of different coatings, as well as the design, we're able to do this in certain regions of the mouth. And so here we see the immediate overdenture that we deliver to the patient that has about three pounds of retention holding that into place. This is the radiograph immediately after. And so you can see the sockets are filled. And so those were late, will later turn into the patient's bone. But you can see the locators are fully seated as well. So having the ability to take your patient from A to Z allows you to be more comprehensive, uh, especially when it's under one roof. Patients love it because they don't have to go to various offices. Now, I still recommend the use of specialists and I still utilize specialists in situations that are over my head, but these are pretty straightforward cases in, the, uh, in this webinar at the beginning that most general dentists with the appropriate training can handle. So here we see the before and after Panorex of this patient's treatment. Let's take a look at another case. We have many cases where a patient presents with a broken endodontically treated tooth, especially in the anterior. And so the traditional wait of eight months, in other words, extract, 
graft, wait four months, place the implant, and then wait another four months to load is no longer acceptable in the patient's eyes. So what we try to provide is immediate implant placement at the time of extraction. Now, looking at the radiograph, the first thing we'll do is obviously we'll get a CBCT, but if we're just going to look at the radiograph, the first thing I'll do is look at the area apical to the root. In other words, is there virgin bone above the root in the upper uh, cases? In the lower cases, obviously, we're going to look at bone below the apical portion of the root. You can see this patient not only had a post that was fractured off, but also a pin in this tooth. So no longer are we going to attempt to play herodontics. You can see she already had an implant placed in uh, the tooth next to this area. So we know that implant placement is going to give us the best long-term prognosis. So as mentioned, once I mentioned that it looks like they're a good candidate, the next thing I will do is actually obtain a CBCT. Here we have the 8100 from CareStream that I utilize in my practice. And so here you can look at her history, this patient's history, and see, in fact, that she has undergone quite a bit of crown uh, work with endodontic treatment. But most importantly, she also has had several implants placed, which, which illustrates to me that she has a very strong bite, a very strong occlusion, and um, brittle teeth. And so if we're going to be placing an implant, we are not just going to place it in the socket. Otherwise, it would be way too far facial. In other words, we want to stay in the triangle of bone um, that we all know so well. And so if we look on this a little closer, we can see that we want to place this implant more towards the triangle of bone. In other words, we want to place it more palatally compared to where the two socket is. Now, that does mean that we will also graft this area in addition to placing the implant because we don't want large voids um, around the implant. So if we look at the triangle, this is what Dr. Scott Gantz talks about all the time in his lectures and his articles. And so I follow that quite closely. And so this is the triangle of bone that we're talking about. So if we measure, we know that we need a certain diameter and a certain length. Utilizing the software in the care stream, um, we're gonna go ahead and virtually plan an implant in that triangle of bone. And so this is something that I plan quite quickly during a consultation. The patients look at me and say, wow, this is amazing, the technology that you have. And I've been to two other consults and nobody explained it in great detail like this to me. So utilizing different um, technologies within your practice is actually gonna help you educate these patients um, to undergo this type of treatment. And so in this case, we're utilizing a 4.2 by 16 millimeter length implant so that we can tap into that apical bone. Here we have a surgical guide fabricated by Pittman Dental Lab. Notice they've also indicated with the blue line where the flat portion of the hex will be because we will actually be um, providing a custom abutment at the same time of uh, placement. And so this has been prefabricated, and I usually ask for it to be gold anodized so that if somebody has a thin biotype, it doesn't show up uh, gray uh, or with a gray hue in the gum area or at the neck of the tooth. So this works very well, and utilizing a fully guided system like the add-in system, we're able to accomplish this. So the day of surgery, we have all our components our surgical guide, as well as our implant and abutment and temporary. So we're gonna go ahead and anesthetize the patient. We're gonna utilize our physics forceps to atraumatically extract the tooth. Notice you can see actually the area where the pin also broke in addition to the um, post in that tooth. This is what the socket looks like. So you can see it's quite atraumatic. We'll get a radiograph to confirm that all the uh, root has been removed from that area. We'll place our surgical guide, confirm that it's fully seated through the windows, 
and actually take a radiograph to confirm that it's um, in the right orientation. And so utilizing Adams Guided Surgical Drill Kit and Insertion Toolkit, we can go fully guided. Fully guided meaning we can fully drill this guided. We can also place the implant fully guided so that we may deliver a final custom abutment into that implant. So the beauty of this system is that it is keyless. Uh, in the past, I've used a lot of um, kits that use keys and it gets cumbersome, especially when you're doing full arch reconstruction. So the beauty is uh, the Adams kit is a keyless procedure. In other words, you don't need spoons or keys to deliver it. It has the trademark active flow irrigation technology where the irrigation can get through the sleeve because of the design of the drill. So you're not heating up the bone. It is self-centering again because of the proprietary design of the drills. We also have at the top of each cylinder a built-in stop to ensure the proper depth. And obviously it's simple. You're literally going left to right with the drills, and then you're using the same insertion um, instruments to place the implants uh, into the guide. So it's a minimal number of tools. So here you can see, we're gonna keep drilling uh, sequentially until we get the flat of that drill to bottom out. So you can see this is not fully down yet. Once we go through the sequence of drills, you can see we're placing a 4.2 by 16 millimeter length um, Turig OS dental implant. The OS stands for the Osseofix, which is an additional um, coating on the add-in uh, implant. And so here you can see we're placing that into the sleeve. And so the insertion instruments allow us to um, completely place this implant guided. So if you look at the notch and the flat portion of the driver, it's actually in the direction of the blue line. We'll confirm that it's down all the way. Just take a radiograph, we know it is, but we're just gonna confirm it with a radiograph because I like to document everyone for my educational um, programs. We check the ISQ um, and we see that it's 77, which is actually quite high. And so now we can go ahead and place the anodized custom abutment, also made by Pittman Dental Lab. We'll take an x-ray to confirm that this is fully seated. And now we go ahead and provide the temporary um, on this abutment. So obviously we're gonna use a temporary cement, um, something uh, like Tempon Clear is something I use. Parkell's got one called ETC. So whatever you'd like to do. Um, if you're doing a screw retain, then obviously the laboratory would fabricate the abutment and the temporary as one, and you would just screw it in. However, in anterior portions, it's difficult because usually the access opening will come towards the facial. Um, so for this reason, we used a custom abutment and a cementable provisional. Again, Utilizing the added surgery system, um, we're able to go from A to Z in one appointment. This process in, um, with, with, the anesthetic, uh, with an anesthetizing the patient, excuse me, um, we were able to complete in about 45 minutes. So again, having the ability to provide guided dental implant surgery is a big plus for your practice whether it's one tooth as we saw, or full arch reconstruction. So we're gonna talk a little bit about full arch reconstruction, but we're gonna talk about fully guided reconstruction. So it provides precise and accurate implant placement. So this is gonna speed up your time, definitely, but there's no guessing. All this is pre-planned. And so you can see in the left-hand corner in the upper portion of the screen, what we designed on our CareStream system, and then what we delivered utilizing a guided surgical kit, as well as the system uh, from Adden, and the kit was provided by um, Pittman Dental Lab. And so we'll see that in just a moment. Uh, some of the advantages of going fully guided 
it reduces the risks of um, perforating or putting an implant on an angle that's way off or hitting any type of anatomical structures. As we mentioned, again, the surgical time is greatly reduced. Um, the case that we showed previously to do the upper and lower, we were done between three and four hours from start to finish of taking all the teeth out, uh, placing uh, 12 to 13 implants, and the patient walking out with fixed provisional restorations. There's definitely no way that I would be able to do that um, free-handed uh, in that quick amount of time. Obviously, we get better patient education, and when you educate your patients better, then they um, commit to treatment better when they understand it better. Obviously, we can do something or some type of treatment plan that is prosthetically driven, and we can provide same-day implants as well as fixed provisionals. Um, so definitely, let's look into guided surgery. Before we do, let me quickly share this uh, research paper. And uh, this was in um, one of the journals that, uh, that talks about implants quite often. And guidance means accuracy is the title, a randomized clinical trial on freehand versus guided dental implantation. And so what they did is look at the angular deviation and they saw that as for a comparison, the study sought to perform, it can be said that the static guided approach, in other words, fully guided, significantly improves the accuracy of dental implant surgery as compared to freehand surgery. Furthermore, the results suggest that any degree of guidance yields better results than freehand surgery and that increasing the levels of guidance increases accuracy. In fact, if you take um, a dentist who doesn't have that much experience with implants and you train them with guided, um, they can actually place it accurately if they follow the protocol than somebody who's well experienced that's freehanding it. So I think that's important to share. There's a variety of different types of guides. One would be a pilot guide. Another would be partially guided where you're only drilling, but you're not placing the implants through the guide. And then obviously you have fully guided where you can drill and place the implants through the guide. And most importantly, you can actually level bone as well. Let's take a look at another quick emergency patient. Again, this patient presented. He had discomfort on his anterior tooth that was already restored. We look at the radiograph um, and then looking at the CBCT, we could see that there was a fracture and also on clinical examination because the periodontal probe submerged about 11 millimeters, um, we knew that this was definitely fractured. So our, go our goal was to place um, this implant guided. And so again, when planning for this, we wanna stay within that triangle of bone. In this particular case, you can see we're trying to stay away from the incisive foramen as well. And this is, uh, very common on these anterior implants, especially around eight, nine. Notice again, we used a 16 millimeter implant so that we can do immediate fixed provisional restoration on this. So again, Pittman Dental provided not only the surgical guide, but the custom abutment and the template for the provisional. So we anesthetize the patient. In this case, we utilize the wedge this is a great pre-step before the um, physics forceps. It helps loosen the tooth. Then again, we're gonna utilize the physics forcep, which is literally a modified class one lever. We're going to atraumatically extract the tooth. Notice we haven't fractured any bone and we've removed this tooth um, in one piece. Here you can see the area where the socket uh, has been examined and debrided utilizing the curette. This again is also from the Golden Dent series of instruments. This is their grafting kit. And so once we've curetted the socket, now we can go ahead and place our surgical guide from Pittman Dental Lab. Notice we'll take a radiograph of that to confirm it's seated and going on the right, right orientation utilizing our add-in guided surgery 
drill kit and insertion. You can see the 16 millimeter um, drill. This is the only system that I am familiar with that actually has a guided kit that actually has 16 millimeters in length. Usually most stop at 13 or 14. And so here we'll utilize the 3.75 by 16. We'll go fully guided as far as the insertion after the fully guided drilling. Now we'll place the custom abutment, use our template to fabricate a provisional restoration. And the provisional is the Kettenbach material. So here you can see the provisional restoration before it's trimmed. And then we'll go ahead and trim that and allow this to heal. So again, in one visit, we're able to provide extract, graft, implant placement, abutment placement, and immediate provisional. So now let's look at full mouth reconstruction going guided. Upon clinical examination, we preview her smile. And when doing full mouth reconstruction, the first thing we'll look is where would the transition line be? Transition line meaning where will the restoration of the hybrid end? And is it in the aesthetic area? If it is, we know we need to level bone so that it's not visible. So this patient presented to the practice, she had several mobile teeth. Notice she has a class three bite. And she also has a variety of different teeth that have quite a bit of decay, extensive decay, and also um, infection. And so at the initial appointment, our goal is to collect the data, take extraoral and intraoral photos, take any necessary models or virtual impressions. And then lastly, obviously, take a CBCT. So here we can see the malocclusion that she has. She has a severe underbite or a class three bite. Notice in the posterior region, she's got some hyper eruption and the maxillary arch, but in the lower uh, regions, she's got quite a bit of interproximal decay. Here we see the occlusal aspect of the upper, and then we see the occlusal aspect of the lower arch. Here we have our side views. And so periodontally, some of these teeth were impaired. Um, however, prosthetically, there were several teeth that were impaired. So our goal is to offer a variety of different solutions for our patient so that they may make an educated decision. Before we do that, we need to obtain the CBCT. The CBCT allows us to not only get a 2D, but also a 3D view of this patient's dentition. If we take a look at where the blue line is lined up on tooth number 10, you can see a large periapical radiolucency showing the amount of infection in that tooth. So upon clinical examination, not all her teeth look that bad. However, upon radiographic interpretation, as well as reviewing the CBCT, we can see there are several areas of concern. So here we have a close-up of tooth number 10. And so obviously we want to avoid this area if we're going to be placing implants for, for a full mouth reconstruction. Here we take a look at the tooth 14 area and we see a failing uh, a tooth that had a previous uh, root canal in it, and we see that there is also a large abscess on that tooth. In the lower region, we also see several endodontically treated teeth that have severe infection. So when doing an examination and a consultation, I will go through the CBCT as well as the clinical photos to educate the patient. And then I will offer them a variety of different solutions and tell them the pros and the cons of all these different types of treatment. So in the maxilla, 
we talked about orthodontics, crowns and implants um, after we've removed the teeth that are non-restorable. Sometimes we get patients that present to the practice where that type of treatment is not affordable. So it's our job to talk about removable dentures, not that we look forward to providing that, but our goal is to remove infection um, and bad teeth if necessary. So it may be a removable denture or partial. Obviously, she's not a candidate for a partial because of the way the teeth are positioned. We talked to her about an overdenture, all on four, all on six, or parallel implants. In other words, some type of fixed restoration on implants. And in the lower arch, we do the same thing. And so we allow the patient to make a decision. And based upon our conversation, based upon the position of her jaw, based upon her occlusion, based upon the high caries rate, her decision is to go ahead and have a full mouth dental implant reconstruction. When looking at something like that, we want to confirm the anatomical landmarks. So real quickly, one can just identify the levels of bone. They can identify the maxillary sinuses as well as the nasal cavities, and then also identify in the lower arch, the level of bone as well as the mandibular nerves. And so real quickly, I can start to plan on the 2D while looking at the 3D, the type of position that I would like to place my implants. So this is what it looks like on the CareStream software. And I actually can do this in just a couple minutes in front of the patient. And again, this is sort of a wow factor for the patient and they totally understand what is going on after seeing it three-dimensionally as well as two-dimensionally. And so what I try to do is provide more than less implants. So I would say nine out of 10 times, my goal is to place all on six if possible, as compared to all on four if um, their anatomy and their bone allows it. So in this case, you can see we went with a lot more implants than less. And so here we're identifying the level that we'll be leveling. So from the incisal edge, apically, we'll be removing, uh, well, we're measuring about 15 millimeters. We're taking about five to six millimeters of bone away because we noticed in her smile, we don't want the transition line being visible. We're gonna take a preoperative bite with the futar bite material. This is uh, from Kettenbach Dental works very well. And we're also going to take Silgenot impressions. Um, Silgenot is an alginate alternative. It's a PVS that is inexpensive, can be poured multiple times. So we're just going to forward this um, to Pittman for them to do a digital workup. Here you can see Pittman Dental Lab has um, put the models into uh, digital models in ExoCAD. And here we can see sort of what her bite looks like. They can articulate this in 3D. This is just showing it open right now. And so based upon the position of those teeth, they can actually prosthetically orient the teeth where they should be ideally um, or where we want them to be. And so the green designates her original teeth, the brown designates where we intend on prosthetically restoring her. So we're actually gonna take her from class three to class one. And so this is something that is major uh, when we're doing it prosthetically. If we were to try to do this orthodontically, um, it would be major surgery, but also it would take several years. Um, so this is one of the reasons why she chose to go with this option. And so this is the setup of the teeth uh, that are proposed for her prosthetic um, treatment. Here we're looking at the lateral view and you can see she's gonna be restored in class one. So Pittman Dental Lab does all this. I don't have the time or the software to do this. So they've literally done a web RX with me um, they also have the assistance of ITX pros. 
Um, so they work together on these larger cases to be able to provide the surgical guides, the bone leveling guides, as well as the PMMA provisionals. So going into a surgery, not only do I have the length of the implant, the position of the implant, notice I've also designated the multi-unit or what Adam calls the transmucosal abutment and the degree of the abutment that I will be using on this. So this is my map or plan that I plan on utilizing when going into the surgery. Because when you have this many components and this many implants and you're doing both upper and lower in one seating, you want to make sure you sort of have a map, otherwise it gets very frustrating. So before surgery, Pittman Dental Lab, uh, in combination with ITX Pros, has provided this workup. And so in the right column, you can see the printed models of the patient. You can see the tooth positioning guides. You can see in the third row, the bone leveling guides. And then in the fourth and fifth row on the right side, you can see the surgical implant guide. Now for the lower arch, you'll notice there are two surgical guides. And the only reason for that is they don't want all the sleeves to be tight together. Um, so what we would do is place the first four implants as directed by that guide and then we'll place the middle and the most distal implants uh, using the secondary surgical implant guide. So this is how we go into surgery. Obviously these will be cold sterile. And so this is indicating on the printed model, the level that we'll be leveling to in the upper arch and the area that we'll be leveling to in the lower arch. Here again, Pittman in conjunction with ITX Pros is providing a treatment plan um, that is prosthetically and anatomically driven. And so no longer are we using immediate dentures and trimming this and taking up a lot of time. Again, I am providing this all in one visit and I don't have a lab technician doing it. I'm doing the pickup myself and this type of surgery we're usually completing within three to four hours. Um, because of this technology. Here's just a close up. So they're mounting all this on articulators and perfecting the bite. Notice the holes are already made. When providing PMMAs, we never want to have a cantilever, whether it's the upper or lower. So notice we're only going premolar to premolar in the upper arch. Once these implants have integrated, we will in fact go ahead and put a first molar on either side. Here we have the lower arch, and so we're going to restore them from 19 to 30, um, even in the provisional restoration because there is no cantilever. Here we can see the orientation of the transmucosal abutments, or as uh, some people may know it, multi-unit abutment and their cylinders. We see the lower arch. So this is all virtually um, and physically done on the models for you by Pittman Dental Lab in conjunction with ITX Pros. They provide a great job um, in able to provide this type of treatment. And so here we're ready for the day of surgery. And notice even on the implants, we've designated which implant goes in which position. The blue designates a 4.2 diameter. The red designates a 3.75 diameter in the add-in implants. And then the yellow designates a 3.5. So even with the leveling in the lower arch, you can see that bone is quite narrow. And that's why we chose to go with the 3.5. We anesthetize the patient. The first thing we'll do is reflect a flap using the reflector from Golden Dent. We'll then take the tooth positioning guide and snap that into the bone leveling or foundation guide and position that so that it is fully seated. Once it's fully seated, we'll use the uh, drill 
for the screws, the retention screws, and then screw this whole complex in. Then we'll take those little silver thumbtacks out and we're left with only the bone foundation guide. So that last guide literally just positions the guide utilizing the teeth. Once it's stabilized using the screws, and this is all provided by Pittman Dental Lab, um, we'll go ahead and extract the teeth. So our goal is to use the wedge in conjunction with the physics forceps um, or even the golden force forceps to atraumatically extract the teeth. And so here's a close up of the wedge. This is a great pre-step for your atraumatic extraction process. And here you can see we're using the golden force forceps to remove the teeth. And so these are the golden force forceps. These are traditional uh, design forceps, but they're uh, black anodized for strength and to maintain the sharpness. And you'll notice the teeth are sharper to really engage um, the tooth. So we'll systematically start extracting the teeth. And so we'll go step by step, working from the anteriors going to the posterior. Once we've extracted all the teeth, we'll go ahead and reflect the palatal tissue. The beauty though with these uh, facial bone foundation guides is we don't have to reflect too far back, just enough to level the bone. Uh, in the past, we would have to reflect quite a bit on the palatal tissue to seat a guide, but now with the facial guides, uh, we don't have to do that. So you can see we've used PTFE to suture the palatal tissues out of the way. And now utilizing the drills and the osseous contouring and shaping kit from Golden Dent, we're gonna go ahead and level this bone. Once we remove the majority, we'll go ahead with the pear-shaped burr to further smooth the bone. And so now we have a nice flat platform of bone to place our surgical guide. We'll confirm obviously that all the curettes have been cleaned out. You can do this either before or after the leveling. And I actually like to use the diamond uh, burrs within that kit to further degranulate any areas that may have some stubborn granulation tissue. Once we've accomplished that and cleaned out all the sockets, we'll place the surgical guide for the drilling of the implants as well as the placing of the implants. And so again, you'll use the little thumbtacks. This is all included by Pittman and their kits. And we'll go through our sequence utilizing the added guided surgery drill kit. Again, this is a keyless procedure. It goes left to right, it's color coded, very easy to use and I've used probably 10 different guided systems um, over my career. Uh, and uh, I will say this is definitely the best one that I've used. And so here we can see the positioner, Again, we've utilized the add-in implants because of the advantages that we've mentioned pretty much the whole evening. We're gonna place these implants fully guided. Once we've placed them, we'll place the multi-unit or transmucosal abutments. And just by looking at these, you can tell the front four are straight and the back two are 17 or tilted. So we were able to do this prosthetically driven and with the assistance of uh, Shane uh, at Pittman Dental Lab, who does a lot of these larger cases with me and Dr. Catter with ITX Pro who assists them, um, we're able to provide this type of dentistry in a short amount of time. And Adden has a large variety of abutments and sizes. Um, I've used systems in the past where it may be a smaller implant company and you would have to buy abutments from another company. Uh, Adent has everything inclusive uh, in one system. And so you never have to look for components. Here we have the prosthetic jig that is confirming the position of all our abutments. 
and it's also acts as a spacer for our provisional. So once we've done the pickup, we'll go ahead and suture this. We've already placed uh, hemostatic agents in the posterior areas. There's no need to graft the posterior areas, um, but we have placed grafting material, the Goldoss putty in the areas next to the implants. Same day, we're gonna go ahead and anesthetize the lower arch. We're gonna reflect a flap using the reflector. Then we'll use the tooth positioner to position the bone foundation guide. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and stabilize it with the screws. Once stabilized, we can take the tooth portion of the guide off. We'll go ahead and extract the teeth utilizing the various instruments that have been mentioned. And we'll systematically go around until we go to the distal. At this point, we'll reflect the lingual tissues and level the bone. Once we've leveled the bone, we'll place our surgical guide. Again, this was in two guides, just because um, otherwise the sleeves would be too close together. So I'm gonna place these four implants first after we go through the drilling sequence. Notice we can always tell that this is fully seated because of the um, little thumbtacks. Once we've uh, placed those implants, we'll place the last three. And then we'll go ahead and pick up the lower provisional restoration. And so this is just one week post-op of the patient. Four months later, we'll go ahead and take bite relations as well as digital impressions of the temporaries, or you can use analog impressions. In this case, we use the analog. We use the Kettenbach material. You can notice there was some tissue here that was overgrown, so we just laser that. We're gonna go ahead and utilize the closed tray impression post from Adden to take our preliminary impressions. Again, here we've confirmed that they're fully seated. And notice the way the implants are placed is exactly the way that was planned. Here you can see the Panacil impression material from Kettenbach for a full upper. We'll snap in the analogs in those in a moment. And here we can see the analog snapped in. We take the lower impression, same thing, insert the analogs with the closed impression tray. And then from here, the laboratory will fabricate a verification jig. In addition, they'll also fabricate what we call a smile composer. This is just to evaluate what you think of the smile before we go to fabrication. If everything looks good, we'll take a bite and inform the laboratory to go ahead and process that. Here you can see the verification jigs. These are made of plaster. That way, if there's any distortion from that closed impression tray um, impression, uh, these would crack and so we would have to take a new impression or loot these and take a new impression. So you can see everything looks good. We also have PMMA provisionals. Notice we have the first molars now on there. We can load this. Patients happy with the PMMA provisional that they go with for about a month to two months if they like, and then we can go to final process if they approve it. The patient was very pleased with the provisional restorations, the look, the feel of them. So we instructed our laboratory to go ahead and fabricate the final restorations. Notice already the whole position of the arches and the bite. So now we have a class one bite. This is her new smile. So three to four weeks later, because the patient was so pleased with the provisionals, we removed the, the new provisionals and delivered the final restorations. My preference is to go with a titanium bar 
with monolithic zirconia. And then they'll put facial pink porcelain um, on that. So here you can see it on the articulator. Here we have the final restorations. Notice the profile of them is very nice and natural. So we'll go ahead and torque these in. These will go in at 15 Newton centimeters for the multi-unit prosthetic screw. We'll do the same with the lower. Here we can see the positioning of the upper and lower arches. Notice the bite is ideal. So once the patient has confirmed everything feels good, we'll go ahead with Teflon and seal the holes. Here's a great before and after. Here we can see the before and after from the occlusal aspect. My goal is usually to um, provide first molar to first molar. And so um, what I like to do for the first six months to year is just put some type of temporary um, material in the access openings on top of the Teflon. That way, if I have to retrieve them, I can easily just pluck these out as compared to putting composite in immediately. And the upper arch, I prefer to go with Mucoprin, which is from Kettenbach Dental. It's literally just a soft reline material. So I'm putting this over the uh, Teflon tape. And in the lower arch, because that is visible, I like to use a material from Taub Dental called Liquid Magic. And so this is placed and cured over the Teflon tape. And so here we see the radiograph of the final restoration with the implants positioned. Here we have the comparison of the before and after. And here we can see the before and after of not only the radiographs, but also um, the final definitive restorations. So again, whether it's one tooth or a full arch, I think if you've learned anything from this evening, um, dive into guided surgery. Obviously start with single teeth. You, can, you don't have to restore them right away. You can just place them and you'll see by utilizing guided surgery, you're gonna be much more precise and accurate, but also you're gonna be very efficient. And so you can move on to quadrant, full arch, and then full mouth reconstruction. Thank you for your attention. And I'll open uh, the forum to Dr. Levine and Kurt. Thank you, Ara. So um, we do have some questions, but I wanted to get it on to, um, to Kurt first. Uh, a couple of things. A few people asked me about um, whether it's recorded in CE. I know some of you may have shown up a little bit late. Uh, if you weren't here at the beginning of the webinar, the webinar is recorded. That will be uh, sent out to you sometime in the next few days, a link to download that. I am also um, going to be uh, handling the CE with uh, through Golden Dent. Uh, they typically take about a week or so to get that out. So, you know, there's, not, there's nothing you need to do it on your end. If you've been here for the entire webinar, you will get the CE. Check your inbox in the next week or so. Check your junk folder just in case. Um, and with that, as I, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I, I can't do this without the sponsorship of, of companies like Golden Dent. Uh, we're going to bring in Kurt Lawler, um, who is going to talk about some of the special offers they have this evening, as well as some educational opportunities, and then we'll open it up to the Q&A. So, Kurt, take it away. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate it. My name is Kurt Lawler. I am with Golden Dent, based here in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, many of you have joined our webinars uh, in the past, but if you're new to Golden Dent, we're um, uh, like I said, we're a Detroit-based company that uh, we started with the physics forceps, and we've uh, kind of continued on from uh, from that philosophy of providing uh, simple, predictable, and, and unconventional uh, dental products that are that are different but uh, clinically uh, add value to your practice. And one of the other things we do, um, which I'll get to here in a, mo in a moment, is the uh, educational components uh, in addition to the product uh, products that we're showing this evening. So uh, as we do on a lot of our webinars, we, we provide a discount code. Uh, so if there was anything you saw this evening that uh, looked interesting, 
uh, whether it's extraction instruments or the, the implants or some of the bone graft material, um, we provide a 15% discount. Uh, the code for this evening is implant15. And the, the website is golden-dent.com for the products. And then amplifieddental.com is our education, which I'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, we do these deals just uh, quickly for each webinar. They're, they're 24-hour deals, uh, same, same deal as we've done for a number of years. And so it's good through uh, tomorrow, March 2nd. Uh, I'm going to start with our education programs. Uh, we've worked with uh, Dr. Nazarian for, um, geez, I don't, probably uh, 10 plus years now. And uh, we've done a lot of really uh, great programs uh, here in Detroit, and we continue to expand upon these programs each year. And um, you'll see just a couple of the photos of, uh, of the classroom-based uh, programs we have, as well as our, our live patient uh, education programs, which have been uh, very popular over the years. And the next ones we have coming up, uh, just a couple more photos here of the classes. The next ones we have coming up is the uh, AMP uh, 5 class. So this is going to be uh, similar to what was discussed this evening, uh, focusing more on the, the full arch uh, guided reconstruction cases. Obviously, if we only have an hour for a webinar, it's, it's, it's tough to get into uh, each specific step and the details of these larger cases. And that's what we focus on during this two-day program. Uh, so you actually get to place uh, for implants, uh, have the surgical guides and all the models provided for you in um, this classroom hands-on uh, program with Dr. Nazarian. So our next one's coming up uh, uh, May 20th and 21st. The next one, if you're not quite ready to, to get right into, I guess, the full arch type cases, this is a, a great program uh, to learn more about guided dental implants. Uh, we'll be going over uh, single cases, just kind of basics of of guided surgery and overall uh, dental implants. Um, this is a newer program for us. We were we were asked to provide a program like this um, because we were really just focusing on some of the more uh, larger comprehensive uh, cases in our programs. And this one's going to be uh, a great opportunity to kind of learn more of the basics before you get into our, uh, our level five program. So this one's coming up April 29th and 30th. And then uh, we've been doing these programs for a long time. I just wanted to quickly mention, so this is our, uh, this will be our first live patient uh, extraction course for, for 2022. We usually don't do them uh, here in Detroit during the winter months. Um, so we have one coming up uh, May uh, 13th and 14th. And this is a live patient course. So we do these um, in an educational setting. We usually see 50, 60, 70, even 100 patients, just depending on how many doctors we have at the program that day. And you get to do the extraction. So there's no, no licensing restrictions. As long as you're licensed in uh, the US or Canada, um, you're able to attend our program and work on the patients because it's at a teaching facility. So this is a great opportunity to get involved if you wanna learn more about uh, the physics forceps, which is what we focus on uh, predominantly in the program. But of course, you're obviously still going to um, have to use some of the other instruments that were shown this evening. We have our, our conventional forceps, the wedge instrument. Um, we go over suturing techniques and uh, the foundation for um, grafting and then ultimately for, for implants. So this is a great step. If obviously you can't um, extract the tooth and properly graft or lay the foundation for implants, um, this is a good, good step uh, to get involved with before some of our implant programs. So we, uh, we are now offering the, the Adin implant brand. So we, uh, we've always focused on extractions and grafting and it's just a nice natural progression for us. Um, but we wanted to make sure that uh, the implant was a, was a good implant. Uh, the doctor and design has been using it for a number of years now and has been very happy with it. And then we also wanted to make sure we had the, the knowledge and the, the product support internally to be able to help our customers with uh, dental implants. And, and we're comfortable that we're uh, finally in that position, and uh, we now um, do have these uh, these implants at our company here at Golden Den. So this was already discussed, but the, the guided uh, surgery kit, which Dr. Nazarian went over in detail, there's some great features, um, which we're, we're more than happy to uh, send uh, anybody that wants more information through email or mail. Uh, about the Adin uh, guided implant kit, but it has a, a keyless procedure and then a really interesting uh, 
irrigation type system through their drills, which passes through the surgical guide. So those are those are two good selling points. And then, as was already mentioned, the the guide or the kit is uh, outlined um, in a smart manner that's uh, easy to follow and uh, and is a uh, simpler to use than some of the systems on the market. But again, if if anybody's interested, you can simply contact us and we can uh, get you that information. So some of our other products that we've had for a while, the Penguin, this is a this is a good product for uh, determining implant, implant stability. So I know this was already mentioned on the webinar. I just wanted to mention again, we do have this product. Uh, the pegs are autoclavable. So if you're looking at some other systems out there, that's uh, one key advantage that they do have is that you can autoclave the pegs unlike some other brands. A really simple device, it literally has one button on it and uh, simple to use and, and makes the, uh, the implant uh, stability process uh, uh, easier for you. So you know that you have the comfort of knowing that the, the implant is stable before it's loaded. Uh, extractions, like I said, this is what kind of started everything for us here at Golden Dent. Um, we, we say we're a one-stop shop for atraumatic extractions. We have physics forceps, we have you know, the elevators, the periotomes, the conventional type instruments, and uh, everything you need to uh, properly extract the tooth, and then as well as uh, graft the socket site. The physics forceps, this is our uh, original set. This is what um, has been our most popular product and continues to be a very popular product for us. Uh, there's one lower instrument and three upper instruments. It's not really a force up, it's an elevator. And if you're not familiar with this product, there's uh, tons of videos that go through the product step by step on our website or our YouTube channel. And this is a uh, great way to get involved with, with extractions. If you're already doing extractions or not comfortable with extractions, this is a, uh, a good solution for achieving atraumatic extractions in your office. Um, bone graft. So we we obviously have bone graft. Um, a lot of companies have bone graft, but our pricing is uh, fair. Uh, it's a, a high quality product. Uh, it's the 50-50 mix and and the product and the uh, the mineralized cortical cancellous blend that Dr. Nazarian prefers in his office, and that's the the one that we stock. Uh, we didn't discuss this this evening, I don't believe. Um, the osteogen plugs. This continues to also be a very very popular product. If you're uh, if you have an atraumatic extraction site or socket and uh, there's no buckle plate damage or bone damage. This is a great product to simply place into the socket as easy as placing a collagen plug, but it is a bone graft. It's a synthetic bone graft in a uh, collagen-based carrier. And this allows a great way to get involved with, with grafting, or if you're just simply looking for more affordable, uh, effective way to graft a socket site um, for the, the, uh, the single or um, you know, non-full arch type extraction cases. We have the membranes. Uh, the Epi guy on the left is our most popular. It's a fully synthetic membrane. Uh, it's a long lasting resorbable membrane. Uh, that's the one I would recommend if you uh, wanted to try one of our membranes. Uh, we have really good feedback on the handling and uh, the clinical results on that membrane. Uh, sutures, we, we do have the PGA sutures. Um, I guess the only thing to say about these is, I mean, it's a great quality product and the price is fair. Uh, we have the burrs, which we mentioned, so I'm not going to go into that. And then um, I think this is my last slide. I just wanted to mention, if if you haven't uh, checked in on one of our webinars recently, this is totally off subject from from implants, but um, we have the Woodpecker brand, and we've we've been having really great success and and feedback on this brand over the last year or so. Um, they have a a really nice uh, endo motor, uh, which I'm showing there on the left, the the red and the black endo motor. Um, the curing light is really, really nice. It's a uh, it's a wide spectrum curing light um, that's around a five hundred dollar price point, which is um, very competitive and, and and just as good as a lot of the other ones we've tested that are um, two to three times as expensive. And then uh, electric motor. So this is also a new one for us, the MT2. Um, there's been a big focus on kind of converting over to electric. Um, so we do have that one from Woodpecker. And then lastly. Um, their their obturation system is is also very good up in the top uh, right corner there. So these are a couple endo products, a curing light and a motor. I just wanted to mention we have these products. If you haven't um, been to our site lately, uh, we have added their their full line of products. And that's it. I'll leave this up. Turn it back to Lauren for the um, Q and A. And then just one other thing I want to mention is sometimes people try to use this code on the uh, the osteogen plugs, most specifically when um, 
uh, there's a, always a five plus one deal uh, on the estrogen plugs. The code will not work on that. Um, we always get asked about that or why it's not working. Um, we consider that sort of like a double promotional uh, code use. And so I just wanted to mention that this code will not work on the uh, five plus one estrogen uh, plug deal on the website. And that's it. I'll turn it back to Lauren for the questions and Dr. Nazarian. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, Ara, you're ready for a few questions here. Absolutely. Uh, there were a couple of questions asking about the name of the lab that you use to uh, make the stent. So that is Pittman Dental Lab, and um, they're out of uh, Georgia. Okay. Okay, you mentioned that you place that one anterior case in a deep bite. I'm curious, what percentage of these immediate implants have you noticed implant integration impeded that led to failure of complete integration? So great point. So when providing a provisional restoration like a single tooth, especially the anterior, we make sure that it's totally out of occlusion. So I'm making sure that um, the other teeth are touching, but not the implant tooth. The implant tooth is mainly for cosmetics, not for function. So we'll remind the patient, we don't want you chewing on that tooth. Um, otherwise that can cause it to fail no matter what system, um, we don't want to ever overload an implant. Now, when we have a full arch, obviously we have to have that inclusion, in occlusion. However, what we do is we split the whole provisional restoration together. So we call it cross arch stability. Um, so that's a lot different because that will uh, fight against the lateral forces on an implant where a single tooth will not. So Essentially, in conclusion, we make sure that that temporary for a single tooth is not an occlusion. Whether it's a deep bite or not, we don't want it in occlusion. Got it. Um, does the patient have any problems adapting to the, the, the new bites that uh, you were referring to? Uh, they're probably talking about the last patient where we had uh, corrected her class three to a class one. No, uh, I wish I could show you her face, but um, she did not want her face shown. So um, it, it's changed her dramatically, dramatically. And she had no complaint whatsoever. In fact, um, she has no pain or discomfort in uh, like her jaw or anything like that, TMJ. Okay. Uh, this is maybe in one of those cases as well. How did you move the teeth in the maxilla forward without surgery? And if no surgery, how are the teeth sitting on the ridge? So that's a pretty complicated question because you have to see the ExoCAD workup. So Shane from Pittman Dental Lab does the workup on those in conjunction with ITX Pro. Um, and what they do is they will prosthetically orient the teeth um, and superimpose them on the teeth that are existing. So we literally did not open the bite, even though it looks like we did. We actually leveled the bone and brought the teeth in the proper orientation. So I don't know how to answer it without them seeing that whole 3D view where the lab technicians can move it around. But I guarantee you, if you do a case with them, they'll definitely illustrate that to you. Okay. Um... So, you know, you've shown some cases that are sort of ideal with, you know, extraction of the tooth and immediate, it works great. What if you don't get integration? Are you delaying or, you know, what are you doing at that point? So if, let's say, I have a 375 by 16 and for some reason I go to put it in and the torque is less than 35, then I will just put a healing cap on it um, and then provide an Essex retainer. Um, with a fake tooth in there um, and not not put a fixed provisional restoration on it. I have yet that to happen with an add-in implant. Um, or another option would be if there's enough room, in other words, if there's enough width in the bone to go from a 3.75 to a 4.2 millimeter implant, then I would not drill for the 4.2. I would literally take the 3.75 out and put a larger diameter implant into that region. But remember, we want at least a millimeter of bone on the buckle and on the lingual. So it really depends on the width of the remaining ridge. 
So the two options is to either A, bury it and don't load it, or B, go with a larger diameter implant and load it, um, or C, again, I haven't uh, experienced this with this implant, um, or C, you just graft it and come back another day. Okay. What's your protocol to determine the amount of bone reduction? And what are you measuring? So ideally with a hybrid restoration, you want about 14 to 15 millimeters clearance for the prosthetics. However, when I'm using a titanium bar, you can actually take it down to about 12, um, which is nice. But again, what I'm looking at is not only it being prosthetically driven, I'm looking at the transitional line. In other words, if somebody's got a big gummy smile, then I may have to reduce more than just a few millimeters of bone. And then I'm also looking at the triangle of bone. If at the tip of the triangle, your implant threads are exposed, then I know I need to level that amount of bone that exposes uh, a potential implant and submerge the implant into the broader base of the triangle. And so these three things is what helps me identify where I need to level bone. This is something we teach it at the course, actually. Okay. Um, in one tooth replacement, the guide was only two teeth. In the other one tooth, the guide was almost full arch. Can you tell us the difference? So can you repeat that again? I didn't get that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I understand it. So I said, in one tooth replacement, the guide was only two teeth. In the other one tooth, the guide was almost full arch. Can you kindly tell I us I think the it difference? was just the way the picture was cropped. Um, but okay. usually you want more teeth enclosed within the surgical guide than less because it makes it more stable. Now, on some occasions, if the patient has limited opening, then what I'll do is if it's, let's say, tooth number seven, I'll have the guide seat from three all the way to 11 and then leave it open from 12 to 15 or 14 so we can put a bite block in there because you don't want a bite block and then they bite down on that and then it's gonna tip the surgical guide. So one of them may have been shorter because the patient has a limited opening um, and so maybe they just saw that shorter side, but usually it's definitely more than just two teeth. Okay. Um, the term keyless, what does that, that mean exactly? So when doing guided surgery in the past, they used to have little sleeves um, that had handles or keys. And so one would have to incrementally position these sleeves for the variation in the sizes of the drills. Now you don't need that because the keys are built into the drills. And so that's what I mean when I say keyless. Got it. A um, couple of questions here asking about uh, contraindications. Um, severe perio, smokers. Is there an ISQ number that you would say not to immediately place a provisional? So are we talking about contraindications for full arch type treatment? Correct, yeah. Okay, so number one, a lot of these patients that present to my practice have periodontal disease. Number two, a lot of patients that present to my practice have a lot of infection. Number three, a lot of patients that present to my practice are smokers. These are all contraindications to implants. However, I will inform the patient of the potential risks and the increased chance for complications. But again, these are the patients that are presenting for implant therapy. So are you gonna deny all these three patients implant therapy? Right. That's the dilemma we as providers um, need to decide. Agreed. Uh, okay, we still have a few more questions here. Uh, I don't want to be accused of price fixing. In the uh, in the Troy, <laughs> Michigan area, what's the uh, what is normal a charge that you're aware of for for full arch and and single uh, immediate cases? Uh, so a full arch, you're looking at twenty five to thirty thousand dollars an arch. Okay. And for just a tooth? Uh, just a tooth, uh, fourth, uh, yeah, thirty eight fifty. 
Okay. About 4,000. Okay. Um, in some of the cases where you were showing putting implants in the mandibular molar regions, was yes. there any thought given to doing, say, for example, a posterior cantilever? And are you concerned about mandibular flexure in those cases? So usually the cantilevers end up being in the upper arch. And the reason for that is there may not be enough height of bone or the bone is too soft. What I found in the lower arch, unless there's like major infection, is with a lower molar, especially a bifurcated root, contrary to what some providers like to do, which is go in the septal bone between the two roots, I usually prefer to go in the distal root. Um, and that's just because of experience, what I found is when you put an implant into uh, a socket, obviously we're talking lower molars, the bone is much more stable um, placing the implant into the socket. And as long as prosthetically it's in the right region, um, I usually will put it in the distal root. Now there has been occasions where, you know, you had to section the tooth and you had trouble getting the distal root out, then I would put it in the mesial root. That's a little bit more challenging. But for my um, personal experience, trying to put it in the interceptal bone with a whole mesial or a whole distal to it, I haven't found great stability. Okay. How are you instructing the patient with uh, screw retrained uh, dentures to clean effectively underneath the denture? So we're informing them using obviously an investment of a water pick or a shower floss. Uh, we're recommending that and we're recommending that they come in um, every six months for a cleaning. Um, we're not taking them off every six months. We're only taking the bridge off um, every couple years um, or earlier if there is a problem. Okay. How do you avoid the mental nerve and the anterior loop when reflecting the gingiva for the guide placement? Experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're doing guided, so I'm seeing everything on the model to know where to stay away from and where not to. Uh, I remember when I first started doing this, not having experience, you would just see a small fiber um, or tissue and you're like, oh my God, is that the mental nerve? Experience teaches you where it is and what it looks like. Okay. Um, the, um, the Aiden implants, you have to use their uh, surgical guide or can someone use like implant visions, you know, their keyless surgical guide or is it, is it all like proprietary? I mean, I would recommend using the kit that goes with the implant. And the reason for that is the drills are shaped for a certain type of implant. And so they're tapered to a certain extent and made um, to fit a certain type of implant. So for example, if let's say add-in sizes are 375 and 42 and somebody else's kit is uh, 3.25, 4.0, and 5.0, then you may either be too tight in that osteotomy or too loose. Um, so I'm not familiar with inf implant vision. If that's, it sounds like that's one from just a, a guided uh, system. So they, they may have it to a certain way for certain types of implants. I don't know. I'm not familiar with it, honestly. Okay. For the, um, for the, for the fixed full arch, are you uh, relining them? And, and if so, how often? So usually what happens is a patient comes in for a consultation. We'll take the CBCT and do the necessary um, recordings of uh, radiographs and clinical photos and everything. And then we'll present to them. And during the presentation, I'll show a variety of different before and after pictures. Some may include headshots, some may not, but they also will include radiographs. At that point, I'll show them a model of what it looks like and allow them to go home and think about it. If they decided that they want to move forward, then we set up what we call a records appointment. At that records appointment, I will take impressions, whether virtual or um, real, 
um, I'll do a bite, I'll do further measurements, and that's the time the patient's paying for the full treatment. At that point, I will forward all this information, including the CBCT, to Pittman Dental Lab, and they will go ahead and work this up digitally. Then they will set up an appointment for me to go over a WebRx with them to view this, confirm it, and then approve it. So we're not forwarding this because the lab bill is gonna be an investment uh, without the patient paying for this, obviously. So the day of surgery, the patient presents, we're gonna go ahead and anesthetize, and if there's sedation involved, we'll do the sedation. We'll go ahead and extract, graft, level, place the implants, and the provisionals. Those provisionals are left in for four months. At that point, I will take them out. So I'm not relining them. And so yes, there will be a slightly uh, bigger space compared to the day that we put them in. And I'll pre-warn the patient, look, we're not gonna reline these. There will be a space that opens up there, but that is why we're taking the impression in four months when the tissue has healed so that your final restoration is going to fit at the position where it is healed. I, I can go to final restoration at the day of placement or the next day, but what I find of patients that have had that done somewhere else, they always come to me usually, um, or I've seen patients come to me and need a reline of their definitive restoration because now they had settling of the gum and the bone. So we can go to immediate uh, final restoration, but I choose not to so that we get the healing of the ridge and we get a nice convex bridge restoration that fits tightly, but fits nicely onto the ridge. Okay, got it. Well, we are at the bottom of the hour, so I wanna be respectful of your time, obviously, and everyone else's time. I, I had mentioned at the beginning that I may not be able to all the questions. There were a few that were left behind, and I apologize about that. But uh, I'll give you the, the final word before we wrap it up for the evening. Well, again, Dr. Levine, I wanted to thank you for giving us this forum to be able to share this information with our colleagues. Um, again, I highly recommend that you dive into implants with the appropriate training, of course, whether it's single tooth, a couple teeth, uh, a full arch, or even an overdenture. There's the opportunity to be able to um, provide this type of dentistry for our patients. We know the baby boomers are uh, growing in size and number, and so finding uh, these patients is not difficult. These patients actually find us because they need teeth. And so they're a dental cripple and they wanna make sure that they're able to function uh, appropriately. So I highly recommend to look into either our courses or even other courses that are available to see what you can provide for your patients in regards to implant therapy. And thank you again to Golden Dent for allowing us to uh, share this information with our colleagues as well. So everyone have a great night. And as you mentioned, Dr. Levine, everybody be safe. Well, thank you. And we, of course, thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us. Uh, it's truly a privilege. I've had the pleasure of hosting you for a number of webinars. And one of the things I love about your content is that it's always new. It's always fresh. Uh, it's, it's always good stuff. And, and we really appreciate that. Uh, and we do thank uh, Golden Dent for, for bringing Dr. Nazari in. Uh, to come in this evening. Uh, you see the, um, the the code up there, the implant 15, golden-dent.com is for the materials, amplifydental.com is for the training. I would highly recommend that you take advantage of, of both of those, uh, you know, both of those websites to see what they've got to offer. Uh, get yourself up to speed on, on all of this. We do these webinars on a regular basis. Uh, for those of you who somehow may have tuned out when I said it the first two times. Uh, the CE will be sent out if within about a week or two. Uh, give it some time. We had, uh, we had close to 800 people registered. Check your inbox for that. Uh, you know, People sometimes will come on tomorrow and say, hey, where's my CE? And I usually just ignore those because uh, I've already told you three times. It, it, it'll take about a week or two. It will come. Same with the recording of the webinar that normally comes out within a few days. So check your inbox for that. 
you're always welcome to email me if you haven't gotten it at the time you think you should have gotten it, and I'll make sure that it, it gets out to you. But as I mentioned, we do this on a regular basis. Any of you who are here this evening are on the list for invitations for future webinars. Please stay safe and healthy out there. You can go catch the uh, the last half of the State of the Union now uh, and uh, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your time. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you on future webinars. Good night, everyone.